Today I'm breaking down my hive. I have two hives. One of them didn't make it through the winter, and that's this hive, and the other one is going strong. I believe that there's value in the bees creating natural systems from start to finish. So if you do reuse wax and foundation from year to year, you run the risk of introducing diseases into your hive. So I would rather render all the wax out, save it, use it, make things from it, and allow the bees to start their process from starting their foundation all the way to honey storage. This is all old comb and it's perfectly good wax. All of this is really dark and the dark color is from the bees. This is where the larvae and the baby bees were. So the darkness is just old comb that the bees have repeatedly used. They build little cocoons in all of these little um, honeycombs and so we need to get the cocoons out. We need to get all of the dirt and detritus and just stuff because we want to render out that beautiful golden beeswax. And we can do that using this old comb. It's just kind of a messy process and there's a little bit of straining involved. Let's get started. So I am rendering last year's wax from my honey extraction. So it was all of the wax that had honey in it. So the tools that I use to render wax are a big pot and two of these mesh bags. This looks like, um, like a crinoline type fabric. And I use one for straining wax. So as soon as this is all melted, I will put it into this bucket, pour the melted wax through this. And this is a fine enough strainer that it will strain out all the debris and the, the gunk. There's gonna be stuff that I need to strain out of here, but not a ton. Nothing compared to the brood comb that you'll see me render down on the next segment. The wax that we rendered out from the honey, the one that had been processed once before, looks really beautiful. It's just this clean wax. There's a little bit of debris that's come up as it was drying. And so I'm gonna render that another time or two just to get everything really uniform and this beautiful golden clean wax. Now this, by comparison, you'll be able to see is the brood wax. So this was the first rendering and you can see there's a lot of dirt and debris and there's all these little chunks and impurities. So this wax will probably need to be rendered a good three or four times more to get all of that debris out. Sorry about the shadow here. So you can see how dirty that water is and underneath this wax puck very thin but underneath you'll see there's just pollen and propolis and just this kind of gooey grit and we don't want that so I'm going to rinse that off and then we'll render this wax another few times. So this is the second purification of the wax that I extracted honey from last year. I'm just going to pour this again into a bucket and let it sit overnight or at least until it's fully solid and it will settle and solidify. I was watching a YouTube video of a man, and I should have got his name so that I could reference it, but he was, um, he did all of this in a slow cooker. And what I found so intriguing about his method is 
He took these mesh bags, these strainer bags, the same bags that I render my honey, I strain my honey through. I also render out all the gunk in the wax. And he took one of these bags, had an old slow cooker from an estate sale, a garage sale, lined the slow cooker with the bag, poured all of his wax in there, turned it on low, left it overnight or during the day for maybe eight hours, and then he just pulled the bag out, um, which I thought was quite brilliant, and just let everything settle and melt in a slow cooker. So that's another possibility. I've always kind of prided myself on the fact that I don't own a slow cooker, but there are times when they would be <laughs> very handy. I grew up in a household where um, casserole is a dirty word, and I had a hard time shaking that. Man, oh man, this is the last time I do this in my melting pot. I think the bucket was much easier to break free. I try not to make crazy faces when I'm doing this because I do make crazy faces when I'm concentrating. All right. Ugh. Holy smokes. Let's see if I can get it free. Okay. Okay, it's free. So, what this looks like. is a really beautiful puck of this golden pure beeswax and then on the bottom you see all this kind of crazy hairy stuff um, and there's a lot of still dirt in the water and impurities and so this is the stuff that you actually scrape off and get rid of okay so i'm going to scrape all this mung off and by the looks of this, by how much kind of debris and gunk is still on here, I'll probably render this out two more times. And it's really, it's, it's, it looks like a big deal because I've got all this stuff going on, but you basically just melt it and pour it into a bucket. You add a little bit of water. So you just need to let it sit overnight. So that's why I've had like three or four outfits on because you just I do it once a day and that gives it time to cool and separate and do its thing. You don't want to scrape down into your wax too much, but you also don't want to just keep putting this stuff back in your water and creating more work for yourself. So this is looking pretty good. I'm going to go outside, um, give this guy a cold hose rinse, and then um, clean out my pot, and I'll see you in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm.